Welcome to the Dell Experience Lounge here in lovely Round Rock, Texas. I'm Dave Nicholson, Chief Research Officer at Futurum, and I'm joined by the esteemed Steen Graham, CEO of Scalers AI, Thanks. and Delmar. Delmar Hernandez. And you're in technical marketing yep, here. Yep, technical marketing. And uh, technical marketing engineer. We're going to talk about something that I am fascinated by. When we talk about AI, you can divide that up into the ideas of training and inference. And we're going to be talking about some distributed training reference implementation mm -hmm. that you've put together. But I want to start out, Delmar, what's the difference between training and inference? What are those things? So training would be the process of, of well, we did fine tuning, right? So it's we're okay. teaching a model new tricks, okay. right? So in our, in our case, we took Llama 270B Okay. And we taught it how to speak. We, we, we trained it on PubMed, right, which is a medical data set. When we say training, what, do you, what, do you, what, are, we, what are we doing here? What, is the, oh. what does the casual observer need to um, understand about This is that? where Steen needs to correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but like training is like you have foundational models, right? That okay. Like, like Llama 2 would be a foundational model okay. that's developed. It takes many hours and days of training okay. to, to, to release that. What we do is we take that foundational model and then we teach it a new trick, right? Which means we, we don't need to spend as much time training it. Okay. We fine tune it, right? So but it's, training takes a lot of work. Training is really hard in terms of horsepower it's time consuming and hardware, and power, power, power yeah. time consuming. Yeah. And then what about, what, what is inference? So inference in, is a fancy word for what? That's when you put the model to work, right? You're, okay. you're basically throwing, so for LLM specifically, you throw a prompt at it and then it responds. The process of it responding is, is making inferences on what you want it to respond with. So you're right? asking it to do something. So people who have used ChatGPT know what inference is. Exactly. When they say, tell me th about this. What about distributed training? What's being distributed here? Yeah, so what you want to do when you when you train a model, and particularly like a, the bigger model, is, is you want to, you're, you need a distributed cluster. And so we've all seen that, you know, kind of the leading large language models today have all been trained on tens of thousands of GPUs. And so there's a, a lot of insight and know-how in creating a cluster, you know, at that scale. And so what we wanted to do through this initiative is we wanted to offer developers the, the ability to, to be able to set up multi-node, you know, training clusters and know how to do that and how to do that effectively with the right optimal uh, software stack so we can get enterprises fired up about deploying training workloads in their own infrastructure um, so they can innovate with their own proprietary data. The, the key thing about distributed training is, is you know, ultimately distributing the model, shard, sharding the model, and then communicating the weights back okay. and forth, and that continuous exercise of, of driving epochs through that data set. And in the case that Del Mar alluded to here is where you know, for this case, we use the PubMed data set, which is like a massive text-based medical data set publicly available. Okay. Um, and we wanted to take an off-the-shelf pre-trained model like Llama 70B and actually fine-tune that model to be a medical expert based on that PubMed data set. Okay. And when you, you want to drive a big model like a, a Llama 270B model, you want to drive, drive it in a distributed way so you can get the training workload to happen faster and then communicate through, you know, via Ethernet, in this case, you know, the weights and the learnings of that model to create a new model that would be essentially a, you know, industry-specific implementation of okay. that. So that's kind of the, the, the flow of how we do the, the distributed training workload. But this distributed training that's happening, we're talking about something that, 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 that is happening on-premises correct in the yeah. in the reference implementation that we're talking about yeah. so 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 what did that look like specifically what were the nodes that you distributed across so we actually have a lab right down the road yeah. round rock 5 so we deployed an xe9680 server with nvidia h100s okay uh, that's our current generation. So GPU in this case. Yeah. GPUs, yeah. And then we have PowerEdge XE8545, which is our last gen server. Okay. Um, that had A100, so NVIDIA's last gen GPU. Okay. And then for good measure, we added in a PowerEdge R760XA, which is a, a box that allows you to put PCIe GPUs in it, right? Okay. The, the two I mentioned previously are SXMs, so higher power, uh, more performant than the PCIe cards. Um, so we, we clustered those together, right? with a power switch switch, a Dell power switch switch, over 100 gig ethernet. And there was a little bit of myth busting going on here, right? Like there's this perception that you, you need InfiniBand to, to make AI clusters. So that was one of the reasons we reached out to Steen, like anytime we needed to do myth busting, like I call Steen, <laughs> like, hey, like I'm being told everybody needs InfiniBand. We'd like to understand if Broadcom 100 gig ethernet 
can accomplish the same task without being the bottleneck to these AI servers. Did it work? Of course it worked. There's features in, in Broadcom, Ethernet notably, where you can you know, bypass to that distributed inferencing framework and, and leverage that, you know, the GPU direct features, if you will, to, to address latency challenges. So we're really showing them how to take a, a leading, you know, open source model, pre-train or fine tune that model based on their custom data set. And then we're showing that you don't need all the latest infrastructure. So we, we're a little bit of a MacGyver of across the Dell PowerEdge portfolio, whether they had, you know, the legacy, you know, anchor tenant high-end system or the latest high-end system, you know, or the 7.6 EXA that just does it all, right? They can just pair all that infrastructure. I think What's you know what's notable as well is we also you know supported this infrastructure across you know AMD Instinct GPUs and Nvidia GPUs so that that framework scales across the the leading uh, GPUs in the market today. Well, so you're talking about like a heterogeneous environment in terms of these server nodes. How realistic is that? Are people are people really going to cobble this stuff together? Or are you trying to make the point that things are moving so quickly that people are going to have infrastructure that's perfectly good that they're not going to want to kick out? the door. Look, we're hearing about Blackwell uh, coming next year. Um, I mean, how realistic is this? Was yeah, this, was this mean, sort of science experimenty, or is this something legit that you think people are going to be doing, this I heterogeneous mean, environment? You took the words out of my mouth. If you have existing infrastructure, like I'm not, and something new comes out, I'm not just going to toss that out, right? I'm going to figure out how to leverage what I have to build my capabilities. Um, and that's, that's the reason why we tackle this, because we know that our customers are not simply trashing their existing infrastructure as they move forward, right? They're, they're increasing their capacity. Just as there's massive innovation and a massive bottleneck today in the workloads that we want, run and run and that hardware can solve, also software innovation is happening. And so for this particular engagement, we also we use new techniques in fine tuning models using traditional fine tuning techniques, but also using like LoRa based uh, techniques that allow us to actually more affordably fine tune models as well. So I think there's going to be innovation, you know, on the software that enables you to use, you know, some of the existing infrastructure you already have. And of course, you know, you know, I think the the industry, a semiconductor industry is continuous innovation and performance. And so, you know, it's it's great to be able to future proof your workloads where you can take your existing infrastructure and your new infrastructure and get them working together. We got one final question for you on the subject of training. When we talk about proprietary data, um, why, if, if a model is being trained on everything, in theory, mm -hmm. why do we need proprietary data to make it more valuable? I think that, that, that do public domain, obviously, is different than the private domain. So enterprises might have their own proprietary workflows trainings, IP, and usually that wouldn't be in the public domain. And so being able to take a model that's pre-trained on, you know, kind of the entirety of human knowledge on the internet and pair that with your proprietary insights is really what could be ultimately transformative uh, to your business. So, so Dell sees this, sees AI as not being just the purview of hyperscale clouds, but also customer data centers and all the way out to the edge. Yeah, exactly. Fair. I mean, these are tools that we're using inside of Dell, too. We have a lot of proprietary data, our own IP, and we're leveraging the power of LLMs to gain insights on all of that information. So instead of alt f in a document or scrolling through thousands of PDFs, you go to a prompt, ask a question, and you get an answer, right? Fantastic. We will have links to the specifics about all of the reference implementations that we talk about. Thanks again for joining us here at the Dell Customer Experience Lounge here in Round Rock, Texas.